Hello and welcome to the program today. This is Roger and Cheryl Hutchins coming to you with another lesson on faith. We're, we're, last week we started with Now Faith, a lesson on Now Faith, and Cheryl has been diligent to get in here and, and uh, draw out some nuggets that will bless you, some things that will speak to your heart, and uh, I, I'm just uh, strengthened and excited about what God's doing, so uh, stay with us, and uh, you know, if you have to pause it, you can come back. It'll be right here on the uh, uh, on the whichever whichever means you're watching, whether it's Facebook Live or whether it's uh, YouTube. That's usually the best way to, on YouTube that you go if you're going back, because you can do a find on the the subject and on our uh, Roger Hutchins, and you you can find it there. But uh, it's it's worth hearing because. It'll strengthen you. It'll cause you to stand up. You know, some of you, I sense right now, I'm sorry, the pro, no, I'm not sorry, but uh, the, the, the prophetic flow kind of kicks in here, but um, uh, I, I feel somebody struggling uh, with your with your children, with, with the, those that are uh, in your family that, are, that uh, just has been so long and they haven't made a move toward uh, God, but I just sense God moving by faith right now. I want you to perk up because uh, your faith is going to kick in and something's going to happen uh, in the midst of this uh, time whenever you begin to take hold of God and God begins to take hold of the situation and begin to bring in uh, some that are that don't know the Lord. And, um, you know, as, as always, I pray for those. If you're listening today and you don't know the Lord, we want to invite you to come to the Lord Jesus. I never know whenever somebody might be watching. Uh, and Jesus told Nicodemus, if you're born again, you can see and enter into the kingdom of God. And, uh, you know, we want you to be able to hear. Hear by the Spirit. Hear you say, what does that mean? Well, get born again, you'll find out. Uh, because whenever you begin to, to, when you're born of the Spirit, then you can hear and, and see the kingdom of God. We're going to pray for you today. Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to come to the people that are listening. And God, we thank you, Lord, for the brothers and sisters, for the family of God, for the saints that are listening today. And God, I thank you, Lord, that you build them up on their most holy faith. And in Jesus' name, I glorify you, God, for what you're doing. I thank you, God, that you're leading us by your Spirit. And Father, I just ask you today to do uh, to, to, to use us, use Cheryl and me, God. Anoint our lips, anoint our minds that we can hear clearly and see clearly in our spirits so that we can be open uh, to hear whatever you be led by your spirit. God, we give you praise and thanks for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, Cheryl. Uh, great lesson last time, and I believe God's going to do it more this time. Well, I want to start by clarifying one thing um, from last week. I want to be sure that I make this clear. I was talking about the word now and what it means in the Hebrew, or the Greek rather, excuse me, but it means but or moreover or and. Mm -hmm. but, and when I talked about that, I said that a lot of times people, because of the word now and the way we understand it in our English, um, grammar, we expect something to happen right this instant. So I want to make this distinction. Faith is always now. It's always current. It's always in the moment. But the manifestation of what we are having faith for may not be instantaneous. Now, people who read the Bible and study the Bible understand that. But um, if you're not real familiar with this, it's important to remember that faith is always right now because faith comes out of your heart. It comes out of your relationship with Jesus Christ. And so when you are believing for something in particular and you're exercising faith, your faith is always now. And I'll tell you why it always has to be now. Because when a person is believing for something they can't see or feel and especially depending on how pressing the need is how important how critical it is um, you have to have now faith because the Bible tells us that we have an enemy he's called the devil he's called Satan he's called the dragon 
and such names and he comes to attack our minds or our emotions to get us fearful and upset because this problem is so critical and nothing's happening so you need to go do something well sometimes there are things we have to do God will let us know if we do need to do it and if we seek God he'll be clear about it but our faith has to be now faith so that when those fiery darts come those thoughts that can just pound your mind we have to say no I'm gonna believe the Lord Jesus Christ I'm gonna believe the Word of God what it says about this situation I'm gonna stand firm on it and um, we have lots of other lessons that talk about some of that uh, we did a series on the whole armor of God and it talks about how to stand in your faith if you didn't um, get to hear those, like Roger said, you can go on YouTube and check it out. It, it was a good series, and it'll be helpful to you. All right, so I want to pick up today. We were <clears throat> finishing up last week on Hebrews chapter 10, because chapter 10 was the reason why Paul wrote Hebrews 11.1. So, I just before we finish, we only got through part of the scriptures, but before I read the rest of them, I want to go back and look at what some of these scriptures we did read say. Because the writer of the Hebrew is reminding them of the words that the prophets wrote. The prophets had prophesied that God was now going to write his laws on their hearts and on their minds. Whereas under the first covenant, the laws were written on tables of stone, little stone tablets that were kind of hand size, easy enough to carry in your hands, and then a whole host of other regulations for the Israelites, for their protection, teaching them how to be clean, teaching them what to do if there was sickness and to keep it from spreading throughout the camp, how to eat properly so that they could live healthy and just all kinds of things. You can find those things in the first five books of the Old Testament of the Bible. So he was reminding them that it was prophesied that this was going to happen. And remember he's talking to people who were under severe persecution at the time. But see, the people of the Bible days, they understood a lot of things about covenant that sometimes we in the Western world don't really understand fully. But blood covenants were very, very important to them and they signified something um, very, um, well, life-giving or life-detrimental. <laughs> So they understood blood covenants. So when the writer of Hebrews talks about the blood of Jesus Christ, that meant something to them. So he's reminding them about their covenant. And he's reminding them the, pro the prophets said, when this is written on your heart and on your mind, remember this, I won't remember your sins and iniquities anymore because the blood of Jesus has wiped it clean. It's gone as far as the east side to the west side. It's gone. Amen. I don't remember it anymore. So there's no need for you to remember it anymore. What we do now is we give thanks that our sins are completely cast away from us. If we have turned to the Lord Jesus Christ and He is our Lord, we don't have to carry those things. If Satan comes along to remind us, we don't pay attention to him. He's not the one we listen to. We listen to the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, so anyways, then he's telling them, he's reminding them to have boldness to enter into the holiest because of this covenant. Now they have boldness to enter into the holiest because of the blood of Jesus. And that it's now a new way of doing things, and it's a living way. When we walk in this new covenant, the Word of God comes alive in us. The life of Christ comes alive in us. So this is a new and living way. Under the first covenant, it was always a reminder of death. Yeah. Always. All the sacrifices. And it was always a reminder of their sin. 
all the things they've done wrong. But we don't live under that kind of covenant anymore. All right, and then... <clears throat> um, he assures them that they have a high priest in Jesus Christ. And see, they were familiar with these terms because they had Aaron, the first high priest, and successive ones after Aaron. So they understood what this writer was talking about. And he was reminding them, you don't have those kind of high priests anymore. You now have this one high priest mm -hmm. whose name is Jesus. And then <clears throat> he says... All right, so since you remember all this, now come close, draw near with a true heart, not a scared heart, Amen. not a worried heart, but a true heart that's full of the assurance of faith. So here is where our faith begins to really become activated by drawing near to the living God, not being afraid of him any longer but entering into this relationship as a father and a child relationship. And so he's telling them, come with full assurance. Just because you're having a hard time, don't be fearful. God understands and he sees and knows what's going on. Amen. And then he says, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. You know, we're not to wake up every morning dreading the day. And we're not to go about our day remembering every bad thing we ever did. No, the blood of Jesus cleanses our consciousness. Not only did he take our sins, but he took the guilt for those sins Amen. on his own body. We don't carry those things. If you're attacked with guilt, you need to stand against that. That is a demonic force. It is a part of the kingdom of darkness, not the kingdom of God. Because this verse right here assures us that we now have an, a pure conscience because of the blood of Jesus Christ. And then he says our bodies washed with pure water. Now this can be taken in different ways and we don't have time to expound on it right now. But I want to say it this way. A lot of sins are committed in the body, by the body, through the body and with the body but the Word of God is called water and we can be washed and cleansed our bodies can be healed see many times the things we suffer in our physical body are the result of sins that we have committed um, any number of them but we now can be washed which heals us as that as we take the word of God stand in our now faith on it our bodies can come into health all right let's see and then he reminds them to hold fast the profession of their faith without wavering don't get shook up just because things aren't happening right away or the way that you think they should happen God though he is invisible he is fully aware of everything going on on the earth absolutely fully aware of it you don't catch him by surprise he is the true and living God he knows all things he sees all things he is everywhere so he knows what's going on in your life all right so he's reminding them don't give up Keep speaking the word of God. Amen. Keep speaking your faith in Jesus Christ. Keep speaking the word of God. If God, if you have a health need, a financial need, a relationship need in family or friends, then you hold fast your profession yes. of faith. I will provide all of your needs according to my riches and glory, is what is written by the Holy Spirit referring to the fact that Jesus Christ has already paid the price so that we could have all of our needs met um, I think Roger mentioned in the last lesson about Jesus taking the stripes on his back that is he was beaten severely very severely beaten until his flesh was torn apart and his bones were exposed but he did that so we could be healed 
All right, so we hold fast our profession looking unto Jesus because it is a done deal in the mind of God. He knows why things are taking so long, if it seems long, or if it's immediate, he knows why it has to be immediate. But it all boils down to trust, our faith trusting in God, that he's a good God and a good Father, and he's paying attention to what's going on in our life. So when your emotions or your thoughts are telling you something different, go to the Word of God. If you need to, go to the book of Psalms and read some of the praises unto God and remember the mercies of God and encourage yourself through the word of God. Amen. All right, then he tells them um, to care for one another and s stir people on to love and to do good deeds and so forth and to come together and don't forget to assemble together so you can encourage each other. It's very important. Alright, so we talked a little bit last week about these next few verses about um, all instead of turning back to what they were in Ju Ju Judaism where they had to offer bulls and goats and it was a constant reminder of sin and death and so forth. He says there's nothing there anymore. It won't ever work again because Jesus paid the one sacrifice once for all time. So the only thing you have looking back at that is worrying about being judged and uh, the fiery indignation of, the, of God. But see, that's not the case now. We've been reconciled to God. So he's telling them, forget about it. There's nothing there to go back to. Um, and he was reminding them to be very careful about how they speak and think about the blood of Jesus Christ. Because this is a very sacred thing. And it should be held in great high esteem by all of us, and especially by all Christians. <laughs> but he did this for the whole world. So <clears throat> he's reminding them to pay very close attention because this blood brought in the new covenant that you now live under, and it's got a whole lot of better things to it than what you had under the the covenant, um, the Mosaic laws and so forth that were set before the people. All right, now that's a lot. <laughs> but <laughs> we're going to pick up in Hebrews 10 and verse 30 and try to wind up this part of the lesson. All right. It does seem like a lot, but you know what? We go through the same things that these Hebrew people were going through. We get discouraged. We feel like we've been abandoned. Um, to this point in the United States of America, we have not suffered so much physical persecution. Sometimes there is very verbal and blatant verbal persecution and shunning Christians and so forth. But no matter how severe it is, to us it's important. And then when we feel like people have been ugly or mean to us or put us down because we're a Christian or whatever attacks coming against us if we're sick or whatever, um, these are things we need to remember. Because, you know, Jesus didn't do this just for the Hebrews that were back in the time period that the, the scriptures were written. It applies to all of us. Verse 30 says, For we know him that has said, and that is talking about God the Father, Vengeance belongs unto me, and I will recompense, says the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. But call to remembrance the former days in which... After you were illuminated, you endured a great fight of afflictions, partly while you were made a gazing stock, and that word gazing stock means that they were being exposed like a spectacle, laughed at, jeered at, 
taunted, all of those kinds of things. You were made a gazing stock both by reproaches and afflictions, partly while you became companions of them who were so used. For you had compassion of me and my bonds. So Paul's saying here, you became my companion and companion of other Christians who were um, going through these same things. And, and you had compassion on me while I was doing this. And you took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that you have in heaven a better and an enduring substance. Now, these are good verses to remember when you get so angry and upset with somebody and if they've really betrayed you or done something hor horribly wrong, you remember that it's not your place to repay someone. Jesus taught us not to repay evil for evil. So these are things to remind us of how to conduct ourselves when we're going through difficult times. But I want to just mention um, here this word substance is an interesting word. It, and it says that you have in heaven, that is in the spiritual realm, a better and an enduring substance, which means proprietorship property, wealth, possessions, and goods. So there's something stored up for us that we have the right to draw upon Amen. that is a substance that will help us in our situations. Verse 35 says, Cast not away therefore your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward, for you have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, you'll receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back into perdition or into going backwards. But we are of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Now, I don't have time to comment on all of this, but we are going to talk about verse 35 and the following verses a little bit in our next lesson. But we're getting close to time, and I want to give Roger time to say what he is feeling to say. Well, Cheryl, this is very good. Uh, you know, I, I just sense that maybe... Uh, to give a little more understanding on the purpose in um, the writer of of Hebrews, I, I believe it was Paul. There's different uh, there's different um, well, who, opinions of that, <laughs> but but anyhow, uh, that doesn't really matter. We we believe you know it's it's the word of God, but um, <clears throat> sometimes we have to balance in our own lives what God's saying uh, we're talking about now faith and there's a thing called the Kairos moment which uh, is a moment whenever God purposes for things to be fulfilled or to be manifested uh, the Hebrews those Hebrews had been uh taught through the law and through all their experiences in the past that things were futuristic. That's why they missed Jesus coming mm -hmm. is because they were looking for a Messiah and they thought the Messiah is going to come sit on a throne and they they were not looking for somebody that would come as I said last week uh, as a lamb to take away the sin of the world. Their concept was uh, that it's going to be futuristic. In fact, if you read, if you read behind the the prophets, the Old Testament prophets, they were all, always prophesying about what's going to come. They would prophesy about uh, what the nation would go through. They would prophesy about all those things. So they were constantly looking to the future. And so, whenever Jesus came, and and the announcement was made that this 
this is him whenever Jesus began to uh, be identified as the Son of God uh, and they began to understand that this is the Messiah uh, it took away their future because they couldn't think in the now they couldn't think in the uh, of what God's doing right now and uh, that's important to us because many times we want to put our uh, deliverance off in the future religion today now right. Jesus hasn't taught us uh, you know beloved now are we the sons of God is what John said beloved now are we the sons of God it does not yet appear what we shall be but we know when he appears uh, and that brings me back you need to listen to my series I just did on Thursday nights but um, but uh, our concept has got to come back to the now uh, just like whenever God speaks to us we're not waiting to be sons of God we're or children of God if you want to use that term we're not waiting to be we when we were born again we became children of God now there's a growing process and there's a time whenever there's a manifestation of the sons of God uh, I believe I don't believe it we have to put that even out in the future I believe we can manifest uh, Christ right now we can manifest Christ through us uh, but my sins are forgiven when see there's the thing is we keep trying to get good enough and that's the mentality that is passed on through religion is that when we get good enough then good things are going to happen well that good enough happened on Calvary <laughs> now faith what what's ha what's God doing right now and thank God for what he did for the children of Israel coming through the wilderness. Brought them out of Egypt and, and opened the Red Sea and did all those marvelous things. Thank God for those things. But now faith says that we are the righteousness of God because of what he's already done. Mm -hmm. So when, when we begin to look at that, see, it's a, it's a difference between the... Age, I'll say age. I don't really like that word, but 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 during that time of of the law, under the law and under the old covenant, those Old Testament prophets were always prophesying futuristic. Uh, Isaiah, even when he prophesied, "Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given," he made it present tense, but it was something that was to come, and they they didn't understand it. Uh, but now on this side of the uh, of the cross we understand what he was talking about there was a child that came there was a son given uh, that now <laughs> right now uh, you know freed us to walk as children of God in the earth today now some other things that are confusing is because because we're looking uh, futuristic and wondering what's going to happen is uh, is that uh, we look at prophecies that are already passed and already fulfilled uh, sometime in the future. For example, Matthew 24. Matthew 24 was actually fulfilled in 70 AD. That doesn't mean that there's not the spirit of some of the things that that, that happen, uh, but thank God that we understand, we see what those prophecies happen, and that's important. You know, I, I've heard some Jewish people talk on that, that understand that the prophecies that Jesus said happened in 70 AD, and that closed, uh, that, that closed out some things, and now we swing to a kingdom mentality. Uh, we, we have stepped out of that bondage of that old mentality into a into a kingdom mentality that now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Cheryl's going to pray for us as we get ready to go out off the air. And uh, you know, I want you to pray with us. I want you to just believe with us. I want you to stand with us uh, in in uh, financially if you can. And um, I believe that God will bless you. I believe God will. Uh, you know, if you'll do something, the screen will come on and tell you how to do that. Tell you the address and so forth. Uh, but we stand with you and we believe with you. Father, we bless you and we thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for your shed blood and your broken body so that we 
could come into a relationship with a loving God, a caring God, a God who's got everything we could possibly ever need and loves to share what he's got with us. We do pray for the people who are listening, Father, that you would let now faith arise in their hearts and let them hold fast their confession of their faith that you are going to take care of whatever need they have and you will and then give them eyes to see what you're doing and that you are tending to their situations. We just love you, we trust you, we pray blessings over the people who listen and that you would just enlarge their capacity to receive the word of God and as our faith grows and develops that we may truly be a praise unto the glory of your grace in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. God bless you and we appreciate you being here. You're very important to us and we, we ask God to bless you in every way. We'll see you next time.